but guys this news article has just come out um, and it's interesting so it's about the deployment of the u.s carrier group uh, raises nuclear war threat um this is what north korea says so this is coming this is a warning coming from the uh, un ambassador jay song nam and the article just says north korea warned monday that the unprecedented unprecedented deployment of three u.s aircraft carrier groups taking up a strike posture around the korean peninsula is making it impossible to predict when nuclear war will break out North Korea's UN Ambassador Jae Sang Nam, or Jae Song Nam, said in a letter to Secretary General Antonio Guterres that the joint military exercises with South Korea are creating the worst ever situation prevailing in and around the Korean Peninsula. Along with the three carrier strike groups, he said the US has reactivated round the clock sorties with nuclear bomb, nuclear capable B 52 strategic bombers, which existed during the Cold War times. He also said the US is maintaining a surprise strike posture with frequent flights of B 1B and B-2 formations to the airspace of South Korea. The large-scale nuclear war exercises and blackmails, which the US staged for a whole year without breaking in collaboration with its followers to stifle our republic, make one conclude that the option we have taken was the right one, and we should go along the way to the last, Jar said. He didn't elaborate on what the last might be, but North Korea has launched ballistic missiles that have the potential to strike the US mainland, and it recently conducted its largest ever underground nuclear explosion, it has also threatened to explode another nuclear bomb above the Pacific Ocean. The four-day joint naval exercises by the US and South Korea, which began Saturday in waters off the south, uh, southeastern coast, were described by military officials as a clear warning to North Korea. They involved the carrier battle groups of the USS Ronald Reagan, Theodore Roosevelt and Nimitz, which include 11 US Aegis ships that can track missiles and even South Korean Navy vessels, uh, sorry, and seven South Korean Navy vessels. Seoul's military said in a statement that the exercises aimed to enhance the combined US and South Korean operational and aerial strike capabilities and to display strong will and firm military readiness to defeat any provocation by North Korea with dominant force in the event of crisis. According to the US Navy's 7th Fleet, it is the first time since the 2007 exercise near Guam that three US carrier strike groups operated together in the Western Pacific. Pacific. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis insisted on Monday that the carrier maneuvers are not extraordinary. There is no big message intended for North Korea or anyone else, he told reporters in an impromptu exchange in a Pentagon hallway. This is what we normally do with allies. Reminded that it has been 10 years since the last free carrier exercise, Mattis noted that the Navy has a limited number of carriers and can't often put three in the same place. <laughs> That's not an excuse. It's just a normal operation, he said. The military drills come amid U.S. President Donald Trump's visit to Asia, which has been dominated by discussions over the North Korean nuclear threat. Giant accused the U.N. Security Council in Monday's letter of repeatedly turning a blind eye to the nuclear war exercises of the United States, who is hell-bent on bringing a catastrophic disaster to humanity. He said the exercises raised serious concern about the double standard of the U.N.'s most powerful body. He also referenced Trump's September speech to the U.N. General Assembly, in which the president said that if the U.S. is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Trump tweeted soon after making the speech that Korea's leadership won't be around much longer if it continues its provocations, a declaration that led the North's foreign minister to assert that Trump had declared war on our country. Jar said Monday, the U.S. is now running a mock for war exercises by introducing nuclear war equipment in and around the Korean Peninsula, thereby proving that the U.S. itself is the major offender of the escalation of tension and undermining of the peace. Jar asked Guterres to circulate the letter to the Security Council and the General Assembly and also asked him to use his power under Article 99 of the U.N. Charter to bring to the Security Council's attention the danger of being posed by the U.S. nuclear war exercises, which are clearly threats to international peace and security. So that's the that's the article. It appears to me that North Korea is. Um, I get the image of uh, a country screaming out for attention. Um, they have they have warned multiple times, multiple times, um, that their their hand is kind of being forced um, in this whole scenario. And as I said with the evacuation drills that North Korea's ordered, the air raid siren drills that they ordered, 
um, just yesterday, they also locked, locked down their border. Um, and this is after um, one of the North Korean soldiers defected to the South Korean side. Um, I have my suspicions about that defection. I don't think it was a genuine defection. I think it might have been maybe a signal. Um, to they say that there's a, a lot of um, a lot of sleeper cells in South Korea, and um, it's possible that that could have been a signal. Maybe um, as they were saying on the news, it could have been a signal to the uh, sleeper cells to uh, get ready for action. And then obviously. You've got this letter which was just sent on Monday to the UN Security Council kind of um, telling Guterres to uh, pass on this letter um, around the UN to let them know that basically this is <laughs> this is causing a real potential for war. Um, so I thought I'd just update you guys about that, let you know. Um, that this has taken another step um, where these uh, North Korea is now sending a letter, basically a letter of warning to the UN to let them know that, you know, this is, we're coming up to our last, as he said, where was it? Up here somewhere. Something about coming up on the last, here it is. The large scale nuclear war exercises and blackmails, which the US staged for a whole year without a break in collaboration with its followers to stifle our republic, make one conclude that the option we have taken in terms of building nuclear weapons and resistance was the right one, and we should go along the way to the last. Now what that, it's, it's, it's North Korean translated to English, so sorry, Korean translated to English, so I'm guessing what he means there is they'll continue until the very last moment or until the last point. Um, and as I said here, he doesn't elaborate on what the last might be. But I'm assuming that we're coming up on, we're getting very close. If we're not there already, then we're getting very close to what North Korea terms as their last, their last point of um, acceptance, I guess. Um, and just as a little opinion, I don't know, Obviously, if I was the owner of a country or, you know, the leader of a country, I probably wouldn't be a dictator. But I can I can see where North Korea is coming from in relation to having nuclear weapons as a deterrent against invasion of their country. All we have to do is look at Iraq, um, Syria, basically the Middle East, you know, and look at other countries around the globe that have um, either given up their weapons or abandoned their weapons and then they've been invaded or they've been invaded in the process of trying to gain these weapons so in that sense i understand where the north koreans are coming from but at the same time um i don't know if they didn't try and get nuclear weapons they still got china on their border so that would have been a big deterrent and still is a big deterrent for any invasion of the Korean Peninsula. But now China seems to be kind of stepping back a bit. It's, it's like they're, they're luring, luring America in to say, yeah, you know, we're not going to do anything if you, if you attack, if, if they attack you first and, you know, you attack back, we're not going to do anything. But I don't believe that for a second. I think the Chinese will stab Donald Trump in the back um, and that's just my opinion but you know <laughs> I don't trust that Xi Jinping um, or Vladimir Putin they're both working together that's clear um, and what their ultimate goal is we already know you know they are the they are the kings of the east and they're coming to meet the kings of the west and um, Bible prophecy is going to be fulfilled when exactly, I don't know, but everything that's lined up definitely looks like it.